Good afternoon again, Dr. Glenn. Um, let's not talk about marijuana anymore. Let's talk about alcohol. And uh, what you testified to is rough critics revelation, right? Yes. And uh, how that, that making certain assumptions that you can kind of guess what somebody's blood alcohol was uh, at a certain point before the blood test, right? Yes. Okay. Now, in order to understand this better, I'd like to talk for a minute or two about how alcohol goes into your system. Um, there's three things that happen when you drink alcohol, correct? And if, well, let me generalize. It. The alcohol is drunk and absorbed, or it goes into your system, then it's distributed through your body, and then it's eliminated, right? Um, yeah, so those things are not necessarily sequential. As you're drinking it, it's absorbed, as it's absorbed, it's getting metabolized and eliminated. Okay, so let's talk about absorption of alcohol, okay? When, it, if you and I were sitting there at a bar and we were, were drinking, and we had a few beers, what happens is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the alcohol will go into our stomachs and it'll begin to absorb from our stomach into our body, correct? Yes. Okay, and that process, what's happening is, say we're at zero, we haven't drank anything at all, and then we drink all this alcohol. Uh, what will happen is, is that eventually the alcohol will be completely distributed to the body, right? Eventually you'll absorb it all and it will be distributed throughout your body water. Your liver starts to metabolize it and your kidneys filter it out and you excrete it. Okay, so... All that can be going on at the same time depending on when you're drinking and how long you're drinking for. So when we look at, uh, at, at a certain point, if you're drinking, if we all drink and then we stop and then uh, we do blood tests on our blood and we see what's going on. Okay. What happens at first is when, when we drink, as the alcohol goes into our stomach and, and starts going through the body and getting into the blood, it rises, right? So uh, say you and I did five shots of vodka, and I'm not saying that we drink, but we did five shots of vodka together at the bar. At uh, a certain point, the, the alcohol is going to go into our body, and then at a certain point, it's going to hit that peak blood rate, like going up that curve, right? Is that how that works? At some point after you stop drinking, generally if you stop drinking, you'll have hit your peak, and depending on the times and how you space your drinks, but you'll hit your peak and you'll be coming down from there. Okay, and that peak, uh, it's a lot longer than like THC's peak, right? Generally, yes. Okay, and is it fair to say that that peak uh, can take anywhere up to three hours to get to the top? Depends on what you're drinking, how long you're drinking it for, and um, what you're eating. So if you're drinking over three hours, it might take you three hours to get to your peak. But if you're drinking within an hour, it's going to take you. Although I think you're talking about two different things, sir. You're not talking about. You're talking about after it's absorbed, or. No, no, no. I'm talking about drinking. Let's say from the point of the last drink. Okay. Your blood alcohol is still going to be going up until it's distributed to your blood system, right? Until it's absorbed into okay. your system. Okay. And so from that point, from the last drink, that, there's a, a period of time that happens between that and when your blood alcohol is at its highest, right? Assuming you're drinking steadily, yes. Okay. Well, that's what happens, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, no, not always in the real world. I mean, people, you know, have a drink and wait an hour or two and have another drink or maybe three, you know, so it's not always nice and even like in lab studies where you get people <coughs> drink and say, drink it, you got an hour to drink it, and then after that we're going to measure your blood alcohol. So from the last drink, it's possible, right? Uh, this happens in lab studies that your blood alcohol can take up to maybe even three hours to get to its peak rate, right? Um, Generally not in lab studies, no. The, the three-hour figure is if you are drinking on a full stomach. You're having a big meal and you're drinking wine with dinner. It, would take, it could take up to that long for it to be absorbed. Most of the time, no, much less than that. Um, and in most real Much less mean two hours? It means an hour or less. But it could be <coughs> not even at the extreme. Two hours is a normal figure that is looked at in papers as well. That's an observation you, that we've seen. If you've got something in your system, you've got food in your system, if you're drinking on an empty stomach, which actually most of our cases are, are closer to that because a lot of these kind of incidents tend to happen at night long after dinner, um, usually it's much less than an hour. And it depends also on the type of alcohol. If you are drinking beer that takes longer to absorb because it's more liquid than if you're doing shots. Well, let's talk about that. By the, from the time you had your last drink to the time your blood is at the highest level, there's a lot of factors that go into the equation of how long it's going to take for your blood alcohol to be at its peak, right? Yes, yes sir. And one of those factors is what you ate, right? Yes. And one of those factors is what kind of drinks you were drinking, right? Yes. And another factor is how uh, close 
Together, those drinks work, right? Yes. And another factor is over a span of how long were you drinking, right? Yes. And another factor is what kind of alcohol it was, right? No. <laughs> Not really what kind of alcohol. Well, maybe what kind of proof. Oh, well, in that you're talking about whether it's a lot of ethanol or a little ethanol? I thought you were t or are you talking about the volume of liquid you're consuming. The, the, the actual alcoholic content. No, not so much. I mean. So what about the, the, the type of drink? The type of drink? Well, I just said if you're drinking beer, then of course you've got more alcohol or more liquid um, than if you're doing a shot. So one drink of beer takes longer to get into your system of beer than one shot. So, so with all this stuff going on, it's really tough to just say, if you don't know any of the, the, that background, food, what was going on, what was happening, how long the drinking was, it's very difficult to just assume how long the alcohol took from the last drink to when it was at its highest level, right? On an empty stomach, it's usually... But, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm just asking you, without knowing these factors, it makes that calculation much more difficult. Are you talking about the retrograde extrapolation? No, I'm just talking about from the last drink that you had until your blood alcohol was highest level. Generally, you want to know what they had to eat and when. So those are the things that are the most relevant. I mean, when they had to drink, yes. Okay. So uh, when you talk about retrograde extrapolation, when you're talking about looking back to seeing what somebody's blood alcohol was hours before, okay? Uh, you're assuming that they've already hit their peak alcohol rate, right? No, I'm assuming they're post-absorptive. Everything, well, yes, I guess so. They're assuming everything's in their system. So what happens if, you know, this process of alcohol absorption, if you had dinner or something, takes two hours, you know, you have dinner, have your drinks, hop in your car, 30 minutes later, 20 minutes later, you're pulled over. I mean, certainly your blood alcohol is still going up, right? Well, sometimes that is contended in court cases. So what happens is... Well, that's not... No, no. no, no I'm yes, trying to answer no, your no, question. Object. The counsel's asked the question as a witness. I'll already answer the question. But she, the, well, I think you're it. cutting her off. Okay. okay. In those situations, which is the situation you're describing, we have to know what he drank and when he drank it. And if the last drink was not absorbed, we can subtract that amount that it would contribute from his total blood alcohol level. So, well, what about in this case? We just don't know, right? Well, in this case, if you were drinking beer... And you are um, drinking, you know, one beer you have. By the time when you get, if you finish your last beer, you get pulled over five minutes later. You can assume that the last beer is not in your system, or you, okay, for purposes of argument, say that it is not. But if you're going to say that all the beers for the previous three hours were not absorbed, that would be difficult to assume unless somebody's having a huge dinner with it. Without that information, I would not make that assumption because that is not the usual scenario. But if you um, if we wish to subtract the last beer from, from the total blood alcohol, an average, well, 180-pound man, one beer would contribute about an O2. 160-pound man would contribute more than that. But if, for purposes of argument or back of the envelope calculation, you subtract about an O2 per beer, then we would subtract an O2 off of the um, retrograde extrapolation. So, if so, there's an O9, so in this case, it's subtract an O2 off a of 0.09. What do you get? An O7. Okay, if, so what's the legal limit? No, uh, for OW per se, OWI. Yes. For impairment, none. Per se. OWI, uh, oh wait. Oh wait, okay. So if the gentleman had a beer prior to driving and then got pulled over, if we knew that, then you'd have to take that out, right? Correct. Okay. Now let me, let me uh, ask you uh, another question. You, when, when we're at the top peak level of blood alcohol, and you said that there's a, it steadily goes down from the peak at a rate of point what, 0, 0.015? Is that what it was per hour? If you're average. Okay, so that's like a drink an hour, something like that, right? Um, it's in this case, if you're an average, it's about point two thirds of a drink an hour. Okay. So now you're you're saying that point zero one five is just the average, though, correct? Correct. Right. Now there's all kinds of studies out there because this topic has been heavily written about in academia. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of studies that indicate that there's a much broader range than a point zero one five, right? Yes. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Jones, who we talked about earlier, he found in an article that that range could be as low as a point zero zero six, right? Um, zero zero nine is a paper that I have. Zero zero nine to zero three six. So a zero zero nine. So if you did a zero zero nine in these calculations, that means that the blood is going down a little bit slower, yes. right? Then that would change your calculation in this case, correct? Yes. It so would probably would... change it almost by half, right? Um, Pretty close to it? No. Uh, if you are burning off 009 at a rate of uh, 009 per hour, 2.5 hours, you're going to burn off um, about a point 
021-ish, and so you would add that onto the 06 